This week on Warriors and Company, do you think the president, President Obama, is fighting the war on terror within the rule of law? I do not. In fact, I know that he is not. What about you? I am concerned that he may not be, but I'm not going to go quite so far as to say that he is not following the rule of law. I think his lawyers have told him he is, and he believes them. Let's look. Example number one is the U.S. drone program. And that the drone program uh, is something that has been uh, the Bush administration and the Obama administration say are authorized by the uh, authorization of use for military force that was passed by Congress. And the way that the Obama administration is using that is that they're dropping bombs, targeting for killing uh, terrorist suspects in countries at which, in which we are not at war, including Yemen, including Pakistan, including places in Africa. There is no legal authority uh, for these types of drone attacks. The U.S. cannot drop bombs on people in places that they cannot send troops. Um, it is a, a mechanism, I think, a, my, in my view, a political mechanism that says it is so much easier to talk about how the wars are over and we're bringing troops home um, and that we're not putting more troops in harm's way by dropping bombs. Uh, there's no legal authority for that. There no, there's no judicial oversight for how they determine who they're going to kill and who they don't want to kill. There is a uh, Right after 9-11, there was, uh, on, the, on this kill list, there were approximately nine people, um, al-Qaeda operatives that uh, the military, the CIA, said that they wanted to get. Now, this is something that is going to expand, and there's no legal authority, and there's no judicial oversight. And I would say that here, where we have, it, by latest reports, 3,000, both uh, people who are classified as militants and people who are classified as civilians that have been uh, killed by drones since these programs started to happen, that is way, way, way too many. And in fact, uh, on the day of the inauguration, three people were killed outside of Sana'a and Yemen by drones. This is a real problem. Well, I take a little bit of a different approach to this than, than Vince does in the sense that um, the use of drone attacks throughout the world uh, against foreign persons, I think, is troubling from a moral, ethical, and policy point of view. But I don't subscribe to the fact that it's illegal um, under U.S. law. Uh, and that's the law that the president is bound by the Constitution to follow. My focus has been primarily, and I'm not saying it's a good program, I'm just saying that I think it's a moral policy question rather than a legal one primarily for the president. Um, I focus primarily on the targeted killing of American citizens, which does bring into play the United States Constitution and the rule of law in the United States, and I'm very troubled about that aspect of it. Can you help us understand how this official program of targeted killing works? Apparently, the agencies, primarily the, the Pentagon and the uh, CIA, nominate people to be on the list. And it goes through a, uh, what the White House promises is a very rigorous process of review to determine if those people should or should not be on the list. We don't know exactly what the standard is, but it involves a number of criteria, including whether the host country, the country in which this person, this particular person is, is cooperative or not vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis capturing the person. In any event, they have a standard. Names are nominated. It goes through an interagency process. And finally, it makes it to the president, and he makes the final decision who is or is not on the list. Does that sound like what you understand? I think that's, that's certainly what the, what the government has said happens. And of course, this is the problem, is that the only thing that we ever know about the counterintelligence stuff over the last 10 or 11 years has been either what the government has been forced to say, what journalists have been able to find out, or what human rights organizations like ours have been able to find out on the ground. But that's certainly what they're saying. Or what the government chooses to tell us. What the government us. chooses to tell us. And very often what the government chooses to tell us is forced by uh, media work or litigation work from human rights organizations. Right. There are U.S. citizens who've been put on the same hit list, the same targeted killing list, high value target list that foreigners have. And so far that we know of, three of them have been killed. Um, one of them, uh, I don't know if all of them were targeted. I know one of them was because it was, that information was released. That was Al Awaki. Al -Awaki. Al -Awaki. Anwar al-Awlaki, uh, he's a United States citizen born in New Mexico. Uh, I'm not saying he's not, prob probably wasn't a very bad man, but that's hardly the point. We have lots of very bad people who perhaps uh, we would like to put behind bars or even execute, depending on your point of view on those things. But plenty, of, plenty of evidence that he was a suspect. I think that's right, but there's plenty of evidence that lots of people are suspected of doing lots of things, and that doesn't mean we shoot them from the sky.